<laughs> we, I gotta make this go away somehow. Is that a bumper in your pocket? Is that a, is that a bumper in my pocket or am I just... Yep, yep, just all bumpers here. Everybody, Ethan here and I've got Thunder with me. Thunder is 12 months old and is a retrieving maniac. It is borderline annoying what he does when I get a bumper out, okay? Today, this video is all about woe training and this is something that I believe is lost on a lot of folks. Struggle with it. How do I get my dog to stop? How do I get my dog to stop at a distance? Here, okay, ready? There you go, have fun, okay? How do I get my dog to stop at a distance and I know, horrible dog trainer right here. He's sitting, whining at me. What did I do? I gave him what he wanted. Ah, all right, folks. Good. We're all real here. We're all real people, okay? Stuff happens. You're gonna be working with your dog and you're gonna be like, I don't know why I just did that, but it felt right. And even if it wasn't, okay? So, whoa training, back to that. We've got a few steps. Step one. We utilize a belly collar. We're gonna utilize a second collar system here. If you have just one collar, you can still do this. The ideal situation is to have two on one transmitter. I'm using DT Systems 1820. It's expandable to three dogs, but right now I've got a toggle switch. And I can go black all the way to the other side is orange, so it's really easy to be able to switch back and forth. And I'll show you why we're gonna do that in a minute. But we're going to put a collar on his belly. Now, this is not the very first step in woe training. If you have watched any of our other videos, we show how we teach this positively using pigeons. We call it the positive pigeon drill. Hey, you've got a bird here. They sight pointed in your hand. You let the bird go. They're stopping all on their own, zero pressure. Then we introduce the cue. Whoop, whoa. Okay, let's try that here, right? Let's demo this. Good, whoop. Whoa, can he stop and stand there? Okay, yes, he can. Is he collar conditioned? No, no, he is not. Is he collar conditioned though? That's what I meant to say. No, he is not. He's gonna go look for a bumper again out there. This dude is ready to train, folks, and this is something that's really exciting to me. I love working with dogs that are pumped and ready to go. So, back to this steps. Back to the steps. I'm a little scattered, folks, I apologize, but I've got a dog that's ready to train and some people that are ready to watch. So now we're gonna move through these steps in woe training. We have already taught him how to stop. I just demoed that. I can say, whoop, that's a warning. If the dog is moving, whoa, that means stand still. What we're doing here is the steps to collar conditioning whoa. Now, why collar conditioning? You say, he already stops there, right? Well, collar conditioning is like, is the thing that we do, stand here, son. Calm a second, shh, it's fired up and ready to go. Collar conditioning is how we build consistency with something that dogs already know. So this is not the first time we are working on this. We are collar conditioning something that he has already just demoed that he understands, okay? So step one in this process, we use two collars and we use a belly collar. This lower abdomen pressure it was described, uh, I just watched another video, I'm always watching, learning, somebody else described as a good stop happens with the back end. So applying pressure closer to that area makes this make more sense. The other side of it is we're gonna put this e-collar on his belly and stimulation on those muscles. If you've ever seen a little bit higher level of stim on the dog's neck, it can kind of twitch or their neck can twitch a little bit, right? Or a TENS unit where you've got, um, if you ever gone in for physical therapy and they put those little shocky pads on you and it makes your muscles twitch, same concept here. We're going to apply stimulation to his abdomen. It's gonna make those muscles tighten up a little bit. He is going to want to move away from that. And when he lifts up his belly here, it pulls his rear end underneath of him just a little bit. Stop with the bumper, okay? Let's see if we can make this thing go away. Dude loves to retrieve, folks. Stimulation happens on his belly. He's going to, and you're gonna see this, he's going to move away from that. 
And that's going to get him to go hoop and then go, I should just stop and stand here. It's a very, very, very quick way to begin the collar conditioning process. So step number one, he needs to get used to wearing the collar around his belly because it's a brand new thing. That's where the bumper comes in. We found something that this guy loves to work with and loves to chase and run. It's gonna help him to get comfortable really quickly. Step two will be, once he's comfortable, we're gonna teach him how to stop with the belly collar. There are gonna be no cues involved with this. It's a very simple concept for most dogs. Hopefully he falls into that category. If not, we'll show you how to work through it. Then once he'll stop with the belly collar, we move on to step three and that's to introduce the cue. He's already shown he understands the cue, but we're gonna teach him to avoid, stop son. Now this guy, I will say, one thing about him is he is wimpy. I turned him around and he went rrr, rrr. So we may hear vocalization a little bit and we'll work through that. Vocalization isn't okay. necessary and we're going to find the levels that he can work through. But once we introduce the cue, we're gonna teach him to avoid the collar on his belly altogether by stopping when I say, whoa, the first time. Stand still, boy. <sighs> then after that is all said and done, we're gonna transition back to his neck and he'll be done. This may take on average three to four training sessions. This guy's fired up, he's ready to work. We're gonna see how many steps we can get through in a reasonable training session for him with a good understanding. And then if it takes multiple days, we'll string this all together into one video. Are you ready to get started? Belly collar, here it comes. Now, with little girls, you don't have much to worry about here. Little boys, we gotta get this junk right here. It's gotta stay on the the plus side of the band, not wrapped up underneath of it. So stop, stand still. We're going to tighten this down just a little bit, not all the way tight. All the way tight would be snug down just like the collar is on their neck. You can put two or three fingers in here and it's snug down tight, okay? So this, you can already see, is fairly loose. I can put my whole hand underneath of it, okay? He's going to adjust to that pressure here and he says, what the heck is that? Whoa, it's different. Spin around a couple times, sniff it, check it, whatever. That's where this bad boy comes in. Hey, hey, hey. There you go. Look at that. He can run, he can move, he can pick up a bumper. Here. Nice job, big guy. Okay, so we've done one. Stop. Now we're gonna stug this down just a little bit. Couple more clicks there. Good. A little different pressure. Good, okay. Attaboy, Thunder. Good. Good. Utilizing vibrate as a reminder. Enough now. As a reminder, come on back, straight on back to me. Vibrate on his neck. No, you, we're using no collar pressure on his belly yet at all. Now we're gonna check this and see, are we tight enough? Now, when you try this with your dog at home, it may take one or two sessions for them to get comfortable with this, okay? Again, now we're snug. You can fit two, three fingers under there. We're getting good contact. We have his jewels here. The old twig and berries are in the right place. They're not wrapped up underneath of this, okay? Okay, now we're full tightness. Let's go with another one. Okay, the dog. Hey, oh, come on, bud. Good, no, sir, right here. Nice, good job. Okay, now, I think you all can agree, we're through step number one. That's comfort with the belly collar. Now, I'm going to switch my toggle switch here, and I'm gonna pull it off my belt so that I can give you this indication. We have a lot of folks that send us in videos through our Patreon dog training community, okay? Lifting your transmitter up in the air is not required for the thing to be functional, but it is a good visual for me to be able to go, when I have my collar in the air, my transmitter in the air, there's collar pressure on. When I put my transmitter down, collar pressure shuts off. So you have a visual of when I'm actually using the pressure on the dog, okay? So we've got a one, the lowest level on this collar, on his belly, we're going to utilize. You got an eye on him, okay? Collar pressure on a one continuous. He says, oh, I feel that. As soon as he stops, collar shuts off. 
my timing with my arm was off with the button it was on okay now we're gonna let him go okay he's moving collar turns on as soon as he stops Collar shuts off, okay? You see him feeling that. You see him moving around a little bit. It takes a second for his feet to stop. That's okay. He's feeling the lowest level on this collar and responding to it. Good, okay. Collar's on. Good, it shuts off. Timing's very important, just like in all dog training situations. Soon as he stops all four of those feet, Collar's got to shut off, and that teaches him how to shut the collar off by doing what? Stopping and standing still. Now, it's not important to introduce a cue here because we want to make sure that he's responding to this collar. It's not always the way that we do it with each individual training behavior. Usually, we're teaching the behavior, and then we're applying that over top of. This is slightly different because this is a whole new area, and the only thing that collar on its belly means is stop and stand still, and his natural reaction to feeling pressure here is to stop and stand still. So that's all we need right now. Okay. Colors on. Good. I keep moving my feet because I want to see if he's stopping the collar, if he's stopping and standing still while I stop and stand still. Okay. Colors on. Good. Okay. So I'm going to go up to a two. He's feeling it. He knows how to stop. I want him to stop just a little bit faster. Hey, hey, hey. There's a two. Good. Now that pulled his focus a little bit more. He turned his head back there even where before he wasn't really doing that. It's enough to get his attention. Okay. There's a two. Good. As soon as he stopped, collar shuts off. Good boy. Okay. Collar's on. Oh, wow. Look at that. Stop drastically faster, right? I mean, he could have easily pulled up into me because I was walking away from him, but he didn't. He stopped and stood there. Good. Okay. Collar's on. Almost instantly. Boom, boom, boom. Just little baby steps to go. Whew, I stopped. Okay. Okay. Let's do another one here. Perfect. That's what I want to see. Okay. Give him another fun bumper. This is to keep enthusiasm up, right? This isn't a horrible session. We're going to do a few reps, and we're going to move on. Good. So his instant reaction now. Collar is not on here. Collar's on. His instant reaction is to stop and stand still when he feels that collar on his belly. That means that step number two is done. He now is comfortable with the collar, and he knows how to shut the collar off by stopping and standing still. Now, if we move around, he moves with us, we can stop him again. This is where things start to get really cool. Let's see here. I psyched you all out. I'm talking about my hand up and down. I need an actual like light down here or something so you can see when I push the button. I was prepared to push the button and didn't need to. Good, ready? Okay. Now, if you see your dog start to get sticky, like they're like, oh, you're just gonna ask me to stop again. I'm just gonna stand here and not move. Then that means that you need to up the number of reps with whatever is exciting. Okay, play a little more fetch, add a little more variety in this, get some more movement. Movement is important, why? Because woe training is him responding to the cue. Hey, all right, enough, no, good. So him responding to the cue, stopping. Stop and stand still. If he won't move, we can't rep stopping, right? So we've got to keep him moving. I'm on a two. Hey, hey. There's the collar right there. Oh, good. Okay, let's do another rep. Come on. Okay, okay, come on. There you go. Collar, nice. So he gets that. Now we're going to start into step three. Good. Okay, now if this is your dog, this may be day three or day four or day five in this training process. With Thunder, he's showing he's still ready to rock and roll. Tails up, ears up, enthusiastic, ready for another bumper. Okay, right? If your dog's not showing these signs, 
it's probably a good indication that you need to slow this process down. Spread these steps out over multiple training sessions. And no yeah, more. he's panting, but that is not an indication that he's tired or overworked or anything. No, it's just a little bit warm out here. There's a little sun. He's working hard. He was excited in the beginning of the session. Muddy's tongue is always hanging out of her. Oh, yeah. Mud's tongue's out. I don't think I have a single picture without Muddy, his mother's tongue, hanging outside of her head. Okay? So, step number three we talked about. That's introducing the cue to apply that with the collar so that he can avoid the collar on his belly altogether by stopping when I say, whoa. And I'm going to show you how that looks. We're going to, now that he knows how to do this, we're going to say the cue, whoa, then apply the collar afterward. Okay? So then if I say, whoa, and he stops, then we don't apply any collar. And that teaches him how to avoid the collar pressure by stopping the first time that we ask. Okay. So I'm going to say, hey, 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 come on, come on. Come on. Come on, come on. Whoa. Good. We're going to do a few reps. I'm guessing two or three, and he's going to be stopping on a dime with whoa because he already has a good understanding of what whoa means. Again, this process is just collar conditioning that. Okay. Easy now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good. Good boy. Let's go. Let's go. Whoa. Good. We're going to overlay here. All right, this is conditioning, whoa. Feel that collar again, whoa. What comes after the whoa? The collar, whoa, whoa. Just tapping the button, just tap, tap, after, one tap after I say whoa. We did two or three reps there, whoa, whoa. It's conditioning, that collar is coming after the cue. Okay, good. He wants that bumper bad, folks. All right, so we've got, Whoa, good, he's already stopping. He was slowing up, then the collar came. All right, okay. Whoa, good. Now, I'm going to test this, okay? I've done probably 10 or 15 reps with the whoa. Maybe you could go back and put a little counter on there. I don't know exactly, 10, maybe 12, 15, somewhere in there, okay? I'm going to say, the W word, and see if he stops. I'm gonna give it a split second there. Does he stop or does he keep moving with me? If he stops when I say whoa, then it means he's got a pretty good understanding of this and we're ready to move to the last step, step five, which is transitioning to his neck collar, okay? Okay, good, 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 come on. All right, this is the sign right here, we need another one. Hey, okay, ready, okay. He's starting to figure this out pretty quick. Good. Good dog. Nice. Nice job. All right. No. Enough, wild man. Hey, here it comes, folks. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thunder. Thunder. Whoa. Good. Okay. Okay. Whoa, no collar pressure at all. Whoa, good. Let's walk in here. Uh, 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 uh. This is where stuff gets a little bit. We can fine tune this. We can move all the way in. Uh, uh. We can correct with the collar. I gave a verbal correction. Ah, uh, uh, whatever. You want to use whatever comes most natural to you. No. Good. Okay. It's more about tone. You heard me say, ah, 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 no. All of those things came in the same tone. And he responded the same to all of them. Good. Okay. Whoa. No collar pressure at all, folks. Do you think he understands what whoa means? Now, he understands also the belly collar. Whoa. We can stop him there. We are ready for step number five. Is that right? Did I count that through right? That's transitioning back to his neck. And this is where it's really, really, really cool to have a collar that has transmitter with a toggle switch and two collars. That setup all together makes this really easy because I can stop him with his belly collar. No problem. He gets that. Hey, okay. I can stop him with his belly collar. No problem. 
we're going to use stimulation on his neck. Now, this is one, good. In our training, hey, 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 we use continuous, continuous pressure for movement-based things. Typically, that comes in the form of vibrate. Yes, vibrate is pressure, okay? It's a different type of pressure and it's pretty mild, but it is still pressure. We do continuous pressure when it involves, you get taken care of? We use continuous pressure when it involves movement. When we want him to stop and stand there, that's when we're gonna typically use momentary or nicks. I want him to stop, nick. Now, this is gonna sound a little bit like, hey, didn't you say you use continuous pressure on his belly to begin with and now we're using nicks, why is the change? The thing about it is he's just shown that he understands well. We're utilizing a tap on the collar as a focus redirector, as a wake up, as a hey. You know what you're supposed to be doing here. Just listen to the words that I said. If we use continuous on his neck, and this is in that transition phase, continuous has meant to come to us or to go to a dog bed or to load up in a truck. It's all movement based. So we got to do something just a little bit different to make this process easier. I'm going to get him a quick drink because it is warm, but this aspect of things, right, says he is still focused, he's still ready, and I want to do this last step with him here, but I'm going to get him a quick drink of water. Give me just a second. Okay, so we got a quick drink, gave him a few minutes here, and we are ready to move on to step number five, all right? So one quick caveat. You're watching this right now, right? This is live minus that little drinking session for him straight through what we've been able to do in one session. This is because of the groundwork that we have laid and the dog that he is, okay? He's always ready to work. He's always ready to train. He's extremely intelligent and mentally stable. These are all things that are important to have a well-balanced dog that is ready to do this, okay? On average, like I said, you're gonna take one day, one session per step with the average dog. You may be able to combine a couple steps in there, like get used to the belly collar, then stop with the belly collar, that'd be one step. I would say average dog three to four sessions that comes through the kennel here, and they are going to be to ready to move into what he's going to do right now. We laid the groundwork, teaching all of this with positive reinforcement to begin with, and then backing it up with experience in the field, all of it being based around developing his natural desire to stand and teaching him that cue, okay? Step five. This is transitioning from the belly collar to the neck collar. We talked about we've got to do something just a little bit different because the neck collars meant so many things before. In order for this to be taught and what makes the most sense, the way that we do things, if you're following our program, would be to utilize nicks or momentary. You're going to find whatever level your dog is going to respond to, and this may change based on distractions, but it's going to be tap on the collar with the nick button, okay? Let's do this. As we move through this, he's already shown that he's going to stop when I say whoa, which means he understands the cue, right? Here, have a fun one here while I'm finishing this up, okay? He's gonna stop when I say whoa. We're going to follow up with, just like we did with the belly call. Good, it's going to be, stop now. Another thing that we showed in his last video, if you haven't seen it, we showed his aftermath after the hunting season and what he needs to work on. Polishing his retrieve is one of those things, but I don't have any way to reinforce that right now. So some of them are to hand, some of them are to foot, some of there's some, some screwing around and jumping for it. All of these things are gonna go away in future development, but we're going to say, whoa, and I'm going to nick him on the neck collar now. That'll be the difference. It'll be a tap. If he keeps moving his feet, it'll be tap, tap, tap until he stops. So it's it's essentially a continuous process. The, the annoyance is there continuously through tap, tap, tap until he stops moving his feet. If he sucks into me, like I feel the neck collar now, that's meant recall. If he tries to come to me, I still have the belly collar on. I can make a very quick adjustment, toggle switch over, and stop him on the belly. That's going to help us to get really good reps really fast, okay? Here we go, folks. Come on, come on, come on. Thunder, 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 thunder. Okay, good. Whoa, good. Okay, okay. Whoa, good dog. Now, 
We're gonna try this where we walk around a little bit. We should be able to reinforce. He already understands whoa. He understands the belly collar can shut off, which is a really fast way to teach dogs to stop and stand still. Now we're making that transition to the neck collar. And what we're going to be doing here is walking around, whoa, reinforcing. He moved a foot. That's not standing still, okay? You may say, hey, that's kind of tough. But the more consistent or black and white we make this, don't move your feet. There's no form of correction. Move your feet, whoa, you're going to get a reminder, whoa and then the collar. Then he can learn to avoid the collar altogether by complying. Don't move your feet. Good. Now, the other side of this is his level of training is going to be advanced. There was a baby back step there. That's more of a balance thing. It's time to send him on. Okay. Okay. Good. Whoa. Good dog. Whoa. Good. You can see his ears react just a little bit. You're seeing that collar. He's feeling it, which is the most important thing. It's not at a level where it's too high. We don't want to be in that range. If we have vocalization or anything else, that's not ideal. We need a level that we know he can feel and respond to. Now, this is tough. He sees this. I'm shaking it around. That's exciting. He's been trying to jump for it. I need it to be as invisible as possible. I get tucked clear up in my armpit. Whoa. I want to be able to pet, ah, whoa, and leave him. This is a big step. Can you walk in, pet your dog, walk away from them, and them not move? Let's try it again. Uh, uh, uh. Happy footing there. It's also something that's genetic. His mom did that a little bit. She liked to pick up her feet, even though there wasn't big movement there. These are things to know are there and try and work through. Whoa. Whoa. That's a big step, all right? It was just a very gentle, not exciting or getting him pumped up, just a very calm pet down his side. Said, good dog, now I'm going to leave you and stand still. Reminder for any time he's moving his feet, if you hear me say, whoa, the collar on his neck, one nick is coming after that. Whoa, good. Moving all the way around your dog. He's trying to keep eye, fo eye contact, focus on me right now. He's looking at me. If I walked all the way behind him, he's going to have to pivot his body around to be able to keep an eye on me. That's what he's trying to do. So let's take this in stride with what is going to help him to be successful. Good dog. Okay, we'll give him a fun one here. Okay, ready? There it is. Good dog. And a boy. <whistles> hey, 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 hey. Good. Right here. Here. Okay, that's one thing we got to work on next, kiddo. Come on. Whoa. Reminder on his neck. Whoa. Good. The fact that his response, whoa, when I say whoa and nick him on the collar is to stand there, make the correction, stop moving, means he's got a pretty good understanding of what's going on. And we can reinforce what's naturally there and what's already been developed through his development process as a puppy moving forward here. He's 12 months old, right? Um, we have a pretty good idea that this can be reinforced. This is, we've gotten to the point where he's got a pretty good understanding now even of the collar on his neck still can reinforce whoa and standing still. Okay, okay, good. Whoa, good dog. Whoa, good. I'm gonna try and pet him again. Uh uh uh. Whoa. Happy foot. That's a thing that we see out of his mom. It's a thing I'm seeing a little bit out of him. It's not horrible, but he's trying to stay cued up on me. So that's making micro movements here. In the grand scheme of things, is that okay? Sure, he's not moving. It's not gonna affect anything long-term, but the more consistent we can stay with correcting that even within reason is going to be better from an understanding standpoint of him. Whoa. Whoa. Let's keep working through this here. Whoa. 
wall. Make that challenging move here. Good. Good boy. Okay. Good dog. All right, now folks, he has a really good understanding of collar condition to go well. This is not a one session and done process, but in one session, we've developed a really good understanding, collar conditioning, moved all the way to his neck. We got him used to the belly collar, taught him how to stop to the belly collar, and this will come back into play when we move into steady and wing shot fall training with him later, moving to his advanced testing regiment. If you don't have any plans toward that, you probably won't ever revisit this, but then we were able to transition after we reinforced the cue with the belly collar, transition to the neck collar, and now the very last step, which I guess technically is step six, is to remove this belly collar altogether. And we do this in stages as well. Okay, so first of all, when this is tight down here, he can feel this pressure. We're going to start by loosening it a little bit, kind of like reverse of how we started this whole thing. We've got it, and probably even a little less than that. So he's got a little bit of, he can still feel it's there, but it's completely loose. It's not even doing anything anymore. Okay, good. Okay, whoa. Means we will still be able to reinforce here with his neck. Whoa, whoa. No, sir, good, whoa. Uh -uh. Okay, let's go ahead and loosen it a little bit more. Now, that's doing absolutely nothing. You can see that, I can put my whole arm in here. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, doing absolutely nothing down there, but he can still kind of feel it's there as a gentle reminder. Okay, let's go. Okay, whoa. All right, so that's verbal cue. Reinforcement with the nick on his neck. Whoa. Good. Okay. After he comes back with this retrieve, we're going to go ahead and take that belly collar off and see how he handles. This will be the last indication of, is he ready to go back to the field for continu continued conditioning? This isn't done yet, but it means he's got a good enough understanding to get back to the fun stuff. Okay. It's off, right? Hey, there it is. There it is. Let's get these things out of the way here. Collar, bumper, under my arm. All right, ready? Whoa. Good. Whoa. Collar comes right after the cue. Okay. We're still in that conditioning phase, right? He's not fully, fully there. We couldn't imagine to, I, I mean, I couldn't dare say one training session he's finished. No but he's got a good enough understanding. Like I, I keep saying that, he's got a good enough understanding we can go back to doing other things. We'll put him back in the field where he's already naturally steady. And now we have a way that he understands well enough to be able to reinforce. Okay, let's go, okay. Whoa, good boy, good boy. Okay, go have fun, bud. Folks, that's gonna be step one through six of collar conditioning well. Okay, fetch it up. Did you get confused? Good boy, here. Good dog. That's all the time we've got for now. This beautiful specimen and workhorse is Thunder. I'm the guy with the pink gun. We had a lot of fun. Please, folks, put your questions in the comments below. Do not try to do this in one training session with your dog unless they are showing all of the signs that Thunder showed in this session. He is a very special animal and we've put a lot of groundwork. He's gonna take a dump right behind me or is he just looking for a bumper? I don't know. Come back here, say hi to everybody or bye, I guess. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Good. I'm the guy with the pink gun, this is Thunder. We had fun, folks. I hope you enjoyed watching. We'll catch you in the next video.